Good morning, boys and girls. Um, this is a new book also. This is Mrs. P, and I'm going to read to you. This is written by Cynthia Grady, and it's called Write to Me, Letters from Japanese American Children to the Librarian They Left Behind. That would be like me. So I guess they have to leave, and let's see what happens. I'm not sure how long this book is, so we'll see how much I'm going to read. Write to me, Miss Clara Breed, San Diego Public Library. Letters from Japanese American children to the librarian they left behind. Reading is food for the spirit and immeasurable by Clara E. Breed. That's the author. So do you understand that? Reading is food for the spirit and immeasurable. That's because when you read, there's so many things that you learn and it's not necessarily just the words written on the page. Sometimes it comes to you by the way of the pictures. But anyway, it's really, really good for you. So here she is. Catherine Tosaki returned a stack of books and turned in her library card. We've got to move soon, she said. All Japanese, you know. Mrs. Breed did know. The U.S. government thought Catherine and all people of Japanese heritage living on the West Coast could be dangerous. They looked like an enemy of the United States in a complicated war halfway around the world, so the government ordered that they be imprisoned. Now, just on a side note, this was a long time ago, and they'll probably talk to us a little bit more about that while we read. Miss Breed gave Catherine a stamped, addressed penny postcard in exchange for her library card. Write to us, Miss Breed said. We'll want to know where you are. So, you notice that they said that they gave her a penny stamp, or a penny postcard. Um, our stamps now cost 50 cents or 55 cents, I think. And so, the librarian is going to miss her children. Well, they aren't her children, but it's like you guys are my children. As the tra at the train station, Miss Breed couldn't believe her eyes. Hundreds of families were tagged as, they were, as if they were bundles of luggage. Soldiers with guns stood by. When the children saw their librarian, they ran to her with hugs and smiles as warm as the San Diego sun. Miss Breed gave away a bag full of books and she handed out more postcards. When you have time, write to me. If you need anything, just write. The executive relocation order had come out or had come like a tidal wave, sweeping away everybody in the neighborhood. The library was a lonelier place. Then one day Miss Breed found a penny postcard in her mailbox. Like shells tumbling through the tide, more postcards arrived. Dear Miss Breed, thanks a million for coming down to the depot. And then there's another one, and then she's got some on her desk, and then she's got more. Dear Miss Breed, thank you again for the book. I enjoyed the book very much. Sincerely yours, Mizu Himaka. Dear Miss Breed, we all miss the library very much. Sincerely, Shizuki Kubo. The notes were postcards. The cards, sorry, the cards were postmarked from Arcadia, California. Now that Miss Breed knew where her friends were, she wrote every week. She sent boxes brimming with books and more stamped postcards, and the children wrote back. Dear Miss Breed, we live in a horse stable. Love, Anna. 
Dear Miss Breed, I was overwhelmed with joy to see the books when the postman opened the package for inspection. Thank you, Miss Breed. Thank you. Very sincerely yours, Louise Ogawa. Dear Miss Breed, we have one large shower and one large laundry room. We certainly don't see how they expect over 16,000 people to be clean and also have their clothes clean. Yours truly, Fusa. One weekend, Miss Breed boarded a train to Arcadia. The guards didn't let the guards didn't let her lug the children or hug the children or even shake their hands, but they talked, and Miss Breed gave them more books. Dear Miss Breed, I shall never forget that day you visited us. Yours very sincerely, Louise Ogawa. Thousands of people moved to San Diego for wartime jobs. New children trickled into the library. Miss Breed was no longer lonely, but she still missed her old friends. Miss Breed wanted people across the country to know about the treatment of Japanese Americans on the West Coast. She wrote magazine articles. She wrote letters asking for a library and a school for the imprisoned children. Miss Breed scoured newspapers, listened to the radio, and attended rallies to learn more about the war. See, when she didn't understand something completely, she decided to find out and do her research. Every night, Miss Breed checked her mailbox. Her friends had been transferred from the holding center in Arcadia to a prison camp in Poston, Arizona. Dear Miss Breed, we are now in a strange place. I doubt whether this is even on the map. Bye, Jack Warnaby. These are prison camps with just like little, um, sometimes they're little buildings, sometimes they're little tent buildings. Dear Miss Breed, if this weather keeps up, the Japanese in Poston will be butter. It's 120 degrees in the shade. Postonly yours, Margaret Ishino. Dear Miss Breed, many people here has mumps and measles. Love, Elizabeth Kikuchi. The desert heat stunned them. Then came winter winds and rain. People got sick. Miss Breed sent seeds for planting, thread for sewing, and soap for washing. She sent pipe cleaners, crepe paper, pencils, and glue for making crafts. Dear Miss Breed, the corsages are for you and your mother. They were made by Miss Ahui. The mum was made from lemon wrapping and crepe paper. Very truly yours, Tetsuzo. Everybody's doing something constructive. And she's reading Gulliver's, Gulliver's Travels, which was really amazing. Okay. Dear Miss Breed, I have a kitten now, and it's the sweetest thing. I found him in music class where he had an awful time trying to hide. What? I found him in music class where we had an awful time trying to hide her from our teacher, Love Catherine. The youngest children wrote to Miss Breed about what they saw around them. The older children wrote about their living conditions and how they spent their days. Dear Miss Breed, yes, the food shortage has affected us. We have had no butter or eggs for about two months. Most sincerely, Louise. That's a long time. They wrote about beauty, 
they wrote about fear, and they all waited for peace. Dear Miss Breed, books make the days shorter and happier for us. Sincerely yours, Florence and Margaret Ashino. Dear Miss Breed, I received your book the day after I came back from the hospital. It kept me from being lonesome. Truly yours, Elizabeth Kikuchi. So what what is here in the background are, um, it's supposed to be the newspaper articles. Dear Miss Breed, yesterday I finished reading Lost Horizon. I was continually amazed by its similarity, similarity to this place called Poston. We really have a feeling of isolation here. This book would not have impressed me so strongly if I'd read it a few years ago. Always, Fusa. Dear Miss Breed, when peace comes again to this world, I should like very much to see salmon going upstream. After reading Son of the Smoky Sea, I want to go more than ever. Most sincerely, Margaret Ishino. Finally, the war ended. As the Japanese Americans were released from each prison camp, they had to decide where to go. They no longer had farms or homes, or homes or farms. Their shops, restaurants, and other businesses were gone. Some feared that they would not be welcome in their old neighborhoods. Some moved to the other parts of the country for a fresh start. But others, like Catherine Tasaki, couldn't wait to come home, home to San Diego and to their librarian, home to their friend, Clara Breed. Dear Miss Breed, thank you ever so much for everything. Much love, Catherine. Okay, that... Yeah, that's the end. So we're going to read just a little tiny bit about Miss Breed. Clara Estelle Breed was a librarian for 42 years, from 1928 to 1970. She was the children's librarian at the East Branch of the San Diego County Library, which served many Japanese-American families when the United States entered World War II. The Japanese Navy attacked U.S. Pacific Fleet in Pearl Harbor, Honolulu, Hawaii, on December 7, 1941. Many Americans feared, incorrectly, that U.S. Cit citizens of, ja of Japanese descent might be a threat to national security. In February 1942, President Franklin Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, resulting in the relocation of Japanese, which eventually imprisoned approximately 120,000 Japanese Americans from California, Oregon, Washington, Hawaii, and parts of Arizona. More than half of these were children. They had broken no laws and weren't charged with any crime. Much of their land and belongings were sold. Approximately 30 children corresponded with their librarian. Miss Breed's letters, books, and small gifts lifted their spirits during the three years they were imprisoned in Poston, Arizona. Years later, when Miss Breed packed to move to a retirement home, she found the box of more than 250 letters and postcards she received during the war. She gave them to Elizabeth Kikuchi Yamada, one of the children who had written to her, now all grown up. In 1991, Clara Reed was the honored guest at a reunion for Japanese Americans who had been imprisoned in Post in Arizona. More than 700 people gave her a standing ovation for her kindness, friendship, love, and courage during the war. Miss Breed died in 1994. She was 88 years old. And there she is. And those two are probably her students. What a nice book, and it's a true story. Write to me. 
one of you need to come in here and check this book out. Okay, bye.